My dear Bagginses and Buffins. By the blood of our people, your land is kept safe. I see in your eyes the same fear that will take the heart of me. So do all the to see such times. I hold and keep hold in the end. This good earth. There's some good in this world, and it's worth fighting. All right, I know this is not... Uh our usual programming of Lord of the Rings with a bit of Star Wars thrown in for fun, but it's uh, something that I'm very passionate about. I've recently uh, watched through from start to finish all the films, and I've read through start to finish most of the novels. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. So I, I got very invested in uh, in James Bond for, for a little bit there. And uh, I was really kind of shocked to find out that the line Bond, James Bond, the catchphrase, if you will, of the the spy was ad-libbed by Sean Connery in the debut film. Now, I know the line is not in the novels, at least not at first. It does make an appearance later on, and I always just assumed that was that was um, Fleming trying to kind of mirror the films in a way. Hmm. But what I didn't know is that the original the original script just wrote for Sean Connery to say I am James Bond. <laughs> and the, like well well that's probably what is in the original novels for some of the early works uh where he just like he probably doesn't say it like all like how I just said. He probably has some flair to it, but still, there needs to be more flair. <laughs> there I needs am to... <laughs> James Bond. <laughs> Who me? Ah, James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like they're, they're... the the fact that that was the line, and then Sean Connery in in a moment was able to be like, "That's not James Bond. My name, I'm Bond, James Bond." Like that. That he understood the character and the ego that went with the character and the yep. the 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 macho. Like here's the thing, James Bond is he not only does he have an ego, he really does have this "I'm better than whoever he's talking with" mentality almost at any moment. Yeah, he 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 hardly ever respects them <laughs> in his mind. He just wants them to shut up and stop telling him, telling this evil plan so he can save the day. Like he he really does have this this mentality. And so uh for Sean Connery to really pick up on that early on and that's this is an this is one of the um beginning scenes of the movie. I don't know when they filmed this scene. Uh if it was a, like a few weeks into into filming or whatever, but I just thought that this was really neat to see that, you know, part of why James Bond is iconic now is in part from these film these early films with Sean Connery, whom I'm I'm appreciating more as I get older, I will say. Yep. I I, I still have I still have a soft spot for, for my James Bond. Um but Sean Connery, I, I really do think he did a great job with with those early films that the films start to get kind of weird and silly towards towards the end of his uh stint and then they they get really silly with Roger Moore like a, like yes a, 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 almost unwatchable for me at times nothing Not against really. Roger Moore but I, it's just it's kind of too slapstick <laughs> in a way um but yeah i i just think uh, you know, part of what makes him so iconic to this day is not only the novels being decent novels, uh, at least, the, the films being very fun and entertaining, and Sean Connery being a big reason why, because um, he does ooze charisma in those early films. Um, and part of that charisma is how you say your name, and you don't just say, I am James Bond. <laughs> so I uh, just wanted to point that out. I think that's, that's really cool. That's that's a, it's very stilted and natural. Just, yeah, <laughs> to say I am James Bond. <laughs> right, right. I'm trying to. I kind of want to look up an old script of this now, just to see how it was act like. 
Because there's a lot of dialogue or just mannerisms that, that I believe Sean Connery brought to the table that, to this day, we still kind of mimic um, in terms of, like, even, like, the, the newer James Bond films still try to have Bond mimic some of these these mannerisms in terms of how he <clears throat> how he deals with the, the villain when he's been captured. And just, you know, this this kind of almost playful attitude, like, oh, you think you've captured me, but I'm, you know, I'm actually, I I can get out of this whenever I want. I've actually, I'm learning more about your evil plan, that that kind of stuff. Um, So, yeah, I just thought it was really neat to see an actor have such a massive impact on the the longevity of of the franchise. And it kind of makes me think about, are there other things like that? In maybe, you know, the Lord of the Rings, for example, and maybe in Star Wars. I, I know, I remember uh, coming across an interview from the 80s recently um, with the, the guy who plays um, Luke Skywalker saying that he had to basically uh, tell George Lucas, you have to cut this entire piece of dialogue because it sucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's something about... Uh, I remember that a little bit. Power converters, and uh, I forget. I, I forget the whole piece of dialogue, but essentially, oh, no, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It, it's awful. It's you awful dialogue. Look, you should look that up, um, audience. I'm yeah, to the audience. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll put a link to it. It's on YouTube here. I'll put a link to it in the in the video description. But yeah, it's it's an awful piece of dialogue. And yeah, it's like when they're it, it's when they're approaching Alderaan or something. Yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> and it's like, oh, we have to stop at this charger station for power converters. And it's like, what? <laughs> no, no, what? no. It was worse than that. It was worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was definitely worse than that. I just I don't remember because it's it doesn't make any sense to me because it was cut. But I'm just trying to think of like what it could even be. But yeah, it it's it's one of those moments where an actor understood the the moment and the the character better than the author in a way and showed him the the error of of that and same as sean connery here and i mean obviously in lord of the rings there's a bunch of moments that happen that were by accident such as the knife throwing incident the kicking of the helmet i could go on those aren't what i'm talking about what i'm talking about more is is there a delivery actually here's one here's a perfect example from lord of the rings i got when you have, um, when uh, uh, Saruman dies, uh, he he was telling Peter Jackson that this is not how you act when you get stabbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So he, he was able to, in that moment, change a, a crucial scene, which, again, is not in the books, but still works for the film. <clears throat> and he was able to make that a better scene because in his in his way of talking about it, this is how it actually happens. This is more believable. And Peter Jackson, um, despite Peter Jackson, I think actually having a bit of pushback, they ultimately did end up giving trying that take. And I think that's the one they used because uh, they did like it. But again, that's a moment where where an actor is able to to step in and embrace and and fully integrate into the role in a way that benefits the overall production of the film and ultimately i i mean part of the problem with this conversation is all the people in lord of the rings are so good in their roles that that you, you i could not even picture it with some of the other people that were considered for those roles like Sean Connery was considered for Gandalf. Oh yeah, and like Nicolas Cage and all these people were considered for Aragorn, like or Boromir. Like it just, <clears throat> I can't even picture it because everyone is so good in those roles. Even the even secondary and tertiary characters like Elrond, who I think I I feel that they're like a tertiary character in the in the films. Yeah, they have an important part to play, but they don't have a ton of screen time. Perfect casting. Perfect casting. Like, that's just, yeah. Like, just the, the delivery of the dialogue for those guys, it's 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 beautiful. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to highlight this because I was obsessed with James Bond for a little bit. And uh, it just made me think of, of other ways in which these actors are able to heighten 
the production of something. And maybe that's what's missing in some of these newer shows is that the actors aren't given a chance to embrace their characters. And maybe there's almost too much of a directorial oversight on them where they don't let them play around and, and try out stuff like this, which, which ultimately you might end up liking if you, if you give them a shot. I regret to announce this is the end. I bid you all a very fond farewell. <laughs>